we've got this little one-year-old, um, uh, Manchester, Ter Manchester Terrier, yep, um, that I honestly had not heard of this breed before. Anyway, it's come for a recurrent abscess on the ventral neck right here. Um, and we've done a CT scan, and there's just some contrast enhancement right on this area right here, which is just ventral to the uh, larynx. Um, and so we're going in and we're going to explore it and try to figure out what's going on. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So I'm just making a linear incision right over that swelling. And hopefully there's a grass seed or something in here. That's what I'm assuming. It responds to antibiotics and then recurs when the antibiotics are discontinued. Yes, please. Get our gelpies in here. Sorry, I'm sniffly. Let's get quarter turned down to twenty, please. And I like to remove foreign bodies uh, or um, masses like this in block um, because I'm trying to avoid missing a foreign body. And if you remove it in block, um, you're more likely to kind of enclose the whole thing, get the whole thing out. Anybody else watching? Let us know where you're watching from. That's the most fun part of my day. Nice. And I can't tell this, I mean the mass, the contrast enhancing mass was right on the hyoid apparatus. You can see the sternohyoidus muscle right there. We're getting a bit light? Yeah. All right, we'll just take a break for a second. Hi, Iowa, South Carolina. John Doe, where are you in South Carolina? Um, I grew up in Charleston. I'm just waiting for them to administer a little bit more injectable anesthetic. Hi, Portugal. Hi, Saskatchewan. Mexico, Japan, Iran. Wow, that is a nice mix of people. Have you given the injectable already? So I can keep going. This is not a very exciting surgery today. I don't know that I have a lot of exciting stuff going on today. I have a new camera, if you can't tell, which I think has a much nicer image. Christmas, finding what we have in the middle of this thing. If I had to guess, it probably is a migrating grass seed that uh, popped out of the larynx and into the sub -Q. So I'm cutting the sternohyoideus muscle there. Good. Yeah, it's a, so this is a recurrent abscess in the ventral neck 
of a little Manchester Terrier um, that responds to antibiotics and then recurs. And when the antibiotics are on, when, when, sorry, the clinical signs are showing, she is hypersalivating and gagging. And then when she's on antibiotics, she totally resolves her clinical signs. So hopefully there's going to be a nice little foreign body in the middle of this thing. And if I had to guess, I would say A, um, grassy. So that's down to the thyroid cartilage right there. We have something similar uh, to foxtails, so they're just uh, migrating grass seeds or grass on, is what we say. So first time watcher from Italy. Welcome, first time watcher from Italy. It really is fun seeing where everybody's watching from. I gave the owners about an 85% prognosis that we would cure this problem with this surgery. So we do have some that recur. Combination of CT scan and surgery, we get the majority of them. Welcome. So the dog is in dorsal recumbency, so that's the, the thyroid cartilage or the Adam's apple. Um, so I'm just peeling this thing off the thyroid. And when we get it off, we'll cut it open. That's hyoid apparatus right there. All right, so let's uh, we'll cover that up. And uh -huh. there's our grass seed right there. So I don't know if you guys, I assume you guys can see that right there. Um, so question, there's a question, which is worse, a car carcinoma or a sarcoma? And that is, um, can I get some um, mepivacaine, please? So that's a good question, and it really depends. You can't say one is definitively worse than the other. For example, uh, like a low-grade sarcoma, soft tissue sarcoma, is one of the best tumors that a dog can have. That being said, a high-grade like hemangiosarcoma is one of the worst tumors that a dog can have. Um, carcinomas, again, anal sac adenocarcinoma usually is not a terrible tumor to have. Do we have suction turned on? Um, whereas a, like a high-grade pulmonary carcinoma is one of the worst tumors that you can have. So um, it really, you can't really determine based just on if it's a carcinoma or a sarcoma as to which one is worse. You have to know a little bit more about the, um, the histopath or the type of the tumor. So again, to get you oriented, there's the thyroid cartilage sitting right there, right in there, and then the hyoid apparatus is up here, right there. The, that's the sternohyoideus. Um, sternocephalicus, I believe, right here. So we're just going to inject a little bit of mepivacaine for some pain relief. And then we should be good to go. Definitely no drain in this and definitely no antibiotics after surgery. We've identified the problem. We've taken it out in blocks, so there's no reason to have this dog on antibiotics. And we are going to be able to do a good job closing the dead space. Um, so again, no drain. So 
So I'm just injecting some epifocane into the cut surface. You get some 3 0 PDS, please. Uh, we do offer both. Um, the trick is getting licensed in Australia. So in order to do an internship at our practice, you have to be licensed in Australia. And in order to get licensed in Australia, you either have to have gone to an AVMA accredited school, either within Australia or United States or the United Kingdom or South Africa um, or Utrecht in the Netherlands. Um, if you have not gone to one of those AVMA accredited schools, then you have to go through an equivalency program, which can take a couple of years. You probably wouldn't be able to start your internship until you completed that program. So, so if you went to an AVMA accredited school, definitely worth applying. Um, if you did not, then um, it's a, a harder to do or harder to accomplish. Uh, so if my cautery went through the trachea, I'd probably try to close it primarily. If I didn't realize that I had perforated it, um, what would probably happen is we'd get some subcutaneous emphysema, um, which is not life-threatening as long as it doesn't get too bad. So I wouldn't be too stressed about it if it happened. Um, again, try to close it primarily. and. Uh, if I couldn't close it primarily, you could just let it heal by second intention, in which case you're going to get that sub-Q emphysema. Um, how did the grass seed get there? So, question is, how did the grass seed get there? My guess is that it was probably inhaled and then embedded itself in one of the laryngeal saccules or something like that. And then... Um, and then migrated out of the laryngeal saccule and into the sub-Q space. Is there good evidence for epipocaine or bupipocaine infiltration? I was told by my clinical lead that it's pointless. Uh, definitely not pointless. Um, we, there, there is a lot of literature out there on using intralesional um, sodium channel blockers. Um, I don't have those references right in front of me, but we see a you know, marked response uh, in reduction of post-op pain. The other thing is that uh, about 10 years ago, I cut my hand really badly and had to have surgery on uh, repair three tendons, two nerves, two vessels, and they did intralesional injection of mepivacaine, and I felt absolutely no pain. I took nothing but paracetamol for the first two weeks after the procedure. I, I mean, it was just basically pain-free, and the only time I started getting some pain is when I started getting phantom pain when the nerves started growing back. Um, so I'm a big believer in that, and I know that there's a lot of human literature supporting the use of sodium channel blockers for post-operative pain. Someone's asking the bupivacaine concentration. We use mepivacaine. So we use mepivacaine, and the concentration is 20 milligrams per ml of mepivacaine hydrochloride. And we've got a dose rate. So the mepivacaine is four milligrams per kilogram, maximum total dose. Four milligrams per kilogram at 20 milligrams per ml. So that would be about 0.2 milliliters per kilogram. My favorite thing about Australia is clearly Camille. <laughs> no, my favorite thing about Australia is that it's a great place to bring up my kids. Um, it's safe here. I already spoke the language. The lifestyle is good. They're great beaches. So I have no regrets about moving here. And you feel a little bit isolated, but also when the rest of the world is going a bit crazy, it's kind of nice to be a bit isolated. Can we get some more 3 please? I'm going to hand off to Anna and let her finish this up. And I'll come over and make sure I haven't missed any of the questions.
Uh, so we, um, you could use lignocaine. The problem with lignocaine is that it only lasts for about 45 minutes, whereas mepivacaine lasts four to six hours. And so if you had no other alternative, lignocaine or lidocaine would be fine. But getting something longer lasting like mepivacaine or bupivacaine, um, there are a couple of other ones I think that they use in pro procaine, maybe? Anyway, just one of the longer acting uh, sodium channel blockers would be preferable. Um, you had a question, there's a question about the cheaper vessel sealer device from India. So just look on eBay for vessel sealing device and they just plug into your normal bipolar cautery. It's not anywhere near as good as a Ligashore, but it, it's a lot cheaper. They cost about 200 bucks and they're reusable, re-sterilizable. So if you have a shortage of bupivacaine, you can try to get something like mepivacaine or something like that. Sarah is from Savannah, Georgia, next to Charleston. It's about 100 miles away from Charleston. Um, I'm, I've got one other surgery. I'm trying to think what it is. Uh, what is my other surgery case today? I know I admitted one, and it's a little spaniel. Oh, uh, uh, anal sac mass. Uh, Mexico also has an AVMA accredited school. Excellent. Nocita is not available in Australia, so I'm not using it. So generally, for a margin for cancer removal, um, usually we say two to three centimeter margin. Another good guideline is a centimeter per grade with mast cell tumors and soft tissue sarcomas. Um, with mast cell tumors, the other margin that we'll use is one tumor diameter. Um, so those are the, the different things that we, that we use. Hi, Portland, Oregon. I don't know um, Dave Durham. The name sounds familiar. Uh, so as far as the Bovi tip, I'm using just a standard Covidian electric cautery uh, with just a standard spade tip. Dominican Republic. UK. Italy. I think that the blanking out, starting and stopping, Angela, might be at your end. Um, it's going, it's pretty smooth at our end here, and I don't think anybody else is, is complaining about it. Prince Edward Island in Canada. Boston, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Sunnyvale, California, Dominican Republic, Mexico, Japan, Iran, Georgia, Portugal, Iowa, South Carolina, Saskatchewan, United Kingdom, Ohio. Amazing. Um, so that is really fun. So I turned down the cautery because it was just too energetic and I thought that I wasn't getting the precision that I needed. Nicaragua, Florida, California, Pakistan, Romania. Very exciting. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I hope to live stream something again today. Um, it's great to have everybody on and so nice to um, see people watching from so many different places in the world. It's really exciting to me. Um, anyway, um, so I will, again, I hope I, hopefully I'll be able to live stream something later on today and hope to see you all again soon. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone.